In this presentation, we will take a look at the year-end form W-3 within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in our S-Corp paid payroll file. We're going to go down to the Taxes tab. We're going to be in the Payroll Tax tab. And then we're going to go to the forms on the right side. We want to look this time at the annual form. We have currently entered data into payroll for the first and second quarter. The annual forms would typically be at the end of the year. If we had a full year of data, we would have four quarters. Or if we had some type of partial year, typically it would be the end of the year because we might have started the company and then have the end of the year. Or we might be closing a company and only have the first part of the year. In any case, We'll have the full set of data will be summarized in some way, shape, or form in terms of the annual reports. Our focus this time on the annual reports will be on the W-3. So the W-2s we are familiar with. We're probably going to receive a W-2, but we ha probably have received W-2s or seen the W-2 form. The W-3 is, of course, going to be kind of a summary of the W-2. You can think of it as if all employees were kind of combined together as one employee what the w-2 would look like that's kind of the summary of the w-3 form so we will then select the w-3 form 2019 we're going to run the form and then we're going to view the form uh, within quickbooks so here is our w-3 it looks familiar like the w-2 form it's being generated through quickbooks and we have the familiar box one two three four five six that we would see on a w-2 form and this of course summing up all the W-2s giving us that summary data. We'll compare and contrast this to a payroll report. So we'll do that by going back to QuickBooks tab on the left and then going down to the reports. So we'll select our reports and then we're gonna go down to a payroll report. So we'll scroll down to the payroll detail. We'll select the payroll detail. We're gonna run the payroll detail for the year this time. So we're gonna say we want the pay period to be for this year 2019 is what we're running this for we will then run that report and if we scroll down to the bottom we get kind of our summary data for the year's worth of data we want to be able to tick and tie out and match this to the year end report the w3 so if we go back to the w3 we can see that box one three and five like the 941s have the uh, wages for FIT, Social Security, and Medicare. And these three should match if we were to add up the Form 941 forms for the four quarters to these items as well, the FIT wages, the Social Security wages, and Medicare. So we've seen that on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis as we've looked at the 941, but now we'll do that reconciling again. We should be able to reconcile then the 941s, in essence, to the W-3. However, noting that the Social Security and Medicare will be only half the employee portion of uh, the Social Security and Medicare actual taxes. They will be based, however, on the same wage base for three and five. So the Social Security taxes will be different because this is only the employee portion. The Social Security wages, however, will remain the same on the 941s and the W-3. So now let's go to a comparison here. If we go back to our report, we're going to say here's the wages, regular pay, OT, the salary, the sick pay, the bonus pay, the S Corp, and that gives us total wages. This is gross pay. So this is going to be our gross pay. And we're going to say that that here on our report is 32389.5.84 minus, we're going to go to our reports up top. And of these three boxes, the closest to the gross pay is actually Medicare, the Medicare wages. Because the FIT, notice it's lower than Medicare, and it's going to be reduced by, amongst other things, the 401k, or possible other things, the 401k, which is reported here. The highest number is going to be closest to our gross pay here. So we're going to say, okay, let's take that number and then subtract it from what our report says the gross pay is, which for everybody, for all of our employees, and so we're going to say 319420.84. And the difference between the W3 and our report is that 4,475. If we go back to QuickBooks then and say, all right, what is that 4,475? We can see it's going to be this 4,000, the S Corp, which will be unique to an S Corporation. And that means then 
that this amount is being reported or included in the gross pay calculation as part of basically compensation for the QuickBooks report, but is not being included in the calculation for Medicare taxes. And then the other side of it is going to be the HSA and the vision insurance. And this is because of the settings we set these up to be as. So the HSA and the vision insurance, because of the settings, made it so that they're going to be not items that are going to be taxable for the Medicare, but of course, something that came out of the employee check and is included in the gross pay here. So we could see that difference. If we go back to our report, then we can say, okay, we see how this number ties out to our payroll reports. What's the difference between these two numbers? It's because they're both wages. We can say, okay, box five is 319420.84. Box one is 315608.32. The difference being that uh, 3812.52. If we go back to our forms, the major difference between those two, typically, the amount that the employee put into the 401k, not the employer portion, but the employee portion is something not included for FIT. So we would think that that would be part of the difference. I'm going to subtract out. So this is 3812.52. Remember that number, 5 minus 7812.52 for the 401k plan. And that gives us the difference of 4,000. So in other words, the difference is these two items, which is, which is the S-Corp, and the 401k or in other words if we take the 7812.51 minus the 4000 that gives us that 3812 so that so that means that the s corp wage i mean the 401k not being calculated for fit calculation purposes gross wages and the s corp wages are <laughs> so that's going to be the difference between these two the s corp of course is throwing kind of a a wrench into the system that might not be there throwing a twist a twist in things that might not be there or will not be there if we're not in an s corp that has that particular setting for uh, the s corporation so we're going to go back over here and so that's going to be the difference between the medicare and uh, the fit wages what about the social security wages well to really analyze that and to see what exactly what that is it's it's lower because someone hit the cap and so if we go back over here, we'd have to say, obviously, the one that hit the cap is the owner because uh, Judy Jones had a huge payroll at some point with the bonus. Here's this big payroll for Judy Jones, putting her over the Social Security cap. And therefore, uh, the, the wages, how it would have to be calculated, how we'd have to think about the wages then, would be that it would be similar wages, if I go back over to our report, to Medicare, except for the employee that hit the cap judy jones in our case the owner who would then be capped that her wages would be capped at that point in time and not increase any any more above that cap so that's how we would have to calculate that we would have to actually subtract out the amount that's over the social security cap from basically the medicare wages and that's one way that usually we can we can think about that or the other way we think about it from the other side of things all wages that are Medicare type wages for all employees up until the cap for whoever hits the cap, only people that are going to make, you know, good amount over a hundred thousand will. We had one Judy Jones and then set the cap at that time. And then we've got the FIT. This is going to be the same. Uh, we can't see a direct relationship here, of course, because it uses the table, but the FIT should match what uh, is on the 941s because it's only an employee tax. Then we have the Social Security and Medicare. And if we see the Social Security and Medicare, Social Security is pretty straightforward because we, are, we should have now the 168987.5 times 0 0.062, only the employee portion, as opposed to the 941 that has the employee and employer. And that gives us the 10,477. The Medicare is no longer as straightforward as it as it normally would be because if we get if we have an employee like Judy Jones that goes over a certain limit, then there's added Medicare calculations which we saw on the 941s. So here's the Medicare which we can draw. It's a, it's a little bit more simplified, but now there's going to be basically two tax brackets, a little bit more progressive, which obviously calculates or complicates the calculation to having just one tax black bracket and a, a flatter type rate. So that is that. Now the difference 
uh, this item down here is going to be part of the difference between the Medicare and the wages, it's typically going to be due to the 401k. So that 748, uh, 7812, if I go back over here, the 7812 is the employee contribution into the 401k, not the employer contribution. Notice what's not reported on the W-2 and why the W-2 is not exactly the best form for really thinking about what your compensation actually is because anything that's given as a benefit over and above gross pay, like these items, aren't reflected there or not as clearly. So most people just look at, if I, if I go back to the W-3, if this was a W-2, most people just look at box one and think that's wages or maybe box five, which is closer but even box five doesn't include the employer contributions. So that's still basically a low amount compared to total compensation, what total compensation actually would be. So that's, this is part of the employee portion, which oftentimes will be the difference between Social Security or box five and box one or box three and box one if we didn't have someone that hit the cap and if we didn't have any other kind of items that would be reducing Social Security and Medicare. Then we have the California information down below. We won't get into a lot of detail on the California taxes because, of course, they will differ from state to state. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.